of all the Get a Grip series um, sketches done so far, this is probably the more com most complex and um, it's really been made up as I go along. So let's just see how we're going to build this one up. Starting off with the top of the cylinder in this case, we've gone for an ellipse, we've gone for the St Andrew's Cross, those two uh, diagonal axes, then dividing the front quarter into thirds, a little bit more um, time and effort getting these right at the start makes life a lot easier. So we should have the 12 divisions, the 12 segments for a circular shape, each one of course being 30 degrees apart. Um, Vertical lines on the outside giving us a, an idea of the parallel nature of the cylinder and then the thicker lower ellipse, that thicker lower ellipse, chunkier, more rounded towards the base there. And we can drop down as you would on a drawing board or on the old school drawing techniques of dropping down. And you've got generators down from the top as if the strings hanging from the upper cylinder, the circular surface to the lower one. I'm even putting some in the back here because they may come in handy. Again, sketch grip on this, nice and light, giving a light mark on the pencil on the page, whether it's pencil or whether it's pen, same technique. Three excellent techniques used throughout this whole series. Sketch technique, the outlining technique, and the rendering technique. Okay, some decisions to be made now. We're going to cut this cylinder through the midpoint, through one of these axes I've already drawn on. And the front edge. Um, I'm going to get some numbers on this first just to make sure I know where I am. So I'm going to start to one, two, three, and so on around the bottom. Just quick reminders, just in case I get a little bit confused, it's handy to have this on. So I'm going to try and say cut down as low as at three o'clock here, it's the lowest point. So let's bring this curve around. It's a elliptical type, sloping elliptical type cut in this. It's a, a sloping cut on a cylinder. Uh, I'm doing a little bit of fitting in this. Uh, part ellipse at the front edge. Um, the back edge will be stepped down with a, a horizontal surface. So an ellipse around here, somewhere around there, would give me that back edge. Remember the lower the ellipse, the, the bigger the minor axis, the chunkier, the fatter it looks. So just sketch roughly something in there. Go for a, a vertical slot into this uh, surface now. So I've got either side of three o'clock and I'm going to try and take them up to the midpoint at the centre. I can see that up above, but I've maybe not quite in line, so I have to shift this over a little bit, uh, so it's, that's better, a little bit more evenly spread at the top. And at the moment, maybe just a, a, a slot going in so far, vertically and horizontally. I might change that later on. Um, if I was to take something out of this lower section, I'll put another ellipse in, not quite as chunky as the bottom one, but chunky enough, and there's a very faint line there, which Hopefully in the uh, 1080 version of this, you may be able to see these faint lines. They are intentionally light. Working with a pen, you can still vary the pressure. And I'm putting little, look like doorways at the bottom there. We're going to remove some material down the bottom of this particular form. I'm just trying to fit these things together. Um, the cutouts at the bottom might be straight, or I could maybe have something that's circular that's been machined in. I'm going to go for a little bit of an ellipse here see something that's been is cut into partially removing a chunk at the bottom of uh, each of those little recesses. It could be to align another component in. I'm not entirely sure as, as we're sort of winging this as we go along. There we go. We're using the vertical lines for the vertical. These sloping lines which were lined up on the these uh, on the top. If I'm going to put a hole on that slope I really need to know where this the hole would start from. So Right on the top, I'm just going to have an estimate of where the hole might be and project down from that. But it's got to be set that's a little bit off on the sloping ellipse as you get at the end of that. Would actually be a little bit further over, maybe a bit more to the left. There we go. And that's going to give me a better idea of how far. There we go. Down. That's going to give me a better idea on that uh, sloping, um, sloping hole. Now, this is a stopped slot, but it's got a circular end and it's commonly done to uh, make it easier to remove components and it actually has a little bit more strength. So just try to firm in. I changed the grip a little bit on the pen. You might have noticed that sneak in as I was going around there. And it's a definite change to the, the, the definition, the, the density of the ink coming off. It's really just to give myself on this fairly complex 
um, random form. It's, it's no function at the moment. I'm just trying to play about with the, uh, the concept of building up cylinders and cutting parts off of them. Um, I'm certainly not designing anything. I have no function, I have no aesthetic, I have no strength. It's just considering form more than anything else. So, I've maybe got some outside edges just to tidy up. The rest seem to be building up quite nicely. I'm probably going to change pens to get a little bit more definition on outlines and shadow lines, but the fine liner pen here is not too bad a job at all. And obviously we've got to think about adding tone to something like this. So shadow line at the moment, that's where that hole would come in, the back of the surface and the vertical line. Then we've got the main traditional outline. And as we're going around, we might pick up a few shadow lines of surfaces that we know exist, like the uh, overhang there, and possibly a little undercut on that one. Certainly going to see uh, an outline at the base here and a shadow line at the top. And as you're going around, it's easy to make mistakes or miss something out, so it's worth just double checking, thinking your way through, the outline being the, ob the line between the object and the outside world, and the shadow line being a line that highlights internal details, surfaces that would possibly uh, definitely not be seen, but need to be emphasised. So a little bit of detail going on around this edge here. It's a little bit, maybe not the best angle to have sketched it in, but I'm learning as I'm going. Anything missing? Internal lines I'm not really going to go for. Oh, yeah, bottom edge. Um, internal lines I'm not really going to go for until I get some tone in there to see if I can define that more cleanly. So the form itself, unusual as it is, uh, is fairly clear. If I start changing grips and changing to the side of the tip of the pencil, assuming as always that the light comes from the top left hand side of the page, then we can start rendering the surfaces up. Again, light, as we've done throughout this whole series, start light and then gradually increase the darkness. In this case, it's fairly dark, but I, trust me, we will go darker. Gradually getting light as we come round, just trying to work to that edge. It's, it's lightly constructed. I may have to add a pencil line to this to give it a bit more definition. But I'm gradually getting lighter going around the edge. And of course, the back edge, as it disappears round, will get darker anyway. So there's the surface. If you freeze it at this point, um, you get an idea of just the one surface that's been done. Going straight on to internal surfaces, like this sloping hole at the end of the slot. These are undercuts. Uh, it will be fairly dark, and I think, yeah, we need to get some, a, a considerable amount of uh, tonal change down there to reinforce that, and definitely that corner. Um, there may be surfaces casting shadows onto each other. It's a vertical surface, so I'm going at an angle just to make it look uh, different from the other vertical slopes I have on the sketch. And yeah, a little bit more definition at that back edge, side of the tip of the pencil. There's no hard and fast rules in these things. You have to look, consider, and build up. This is the slope, so going at an angle again, maybe a little bit more of a highlight to dark, banding across this, using the side of the tip of the pencil just to reinforce the flatness, albeit sloping, the flatness of that particular surface. Building up the back edge again. I think I maybe need a bit more definition um, between the slope and the curve, so a little bit of pencil work might, there might might actually be needed after all. I'll try and avoid that where I can, but there we go, we match up with it with the color work now, or the, the tonal work now. The back edge still needs something done to it. There we go, again at an angle. Um, the edges themselves might need a little bit more definition and a shadow coming across. Um, it should take us about two or three minutes to finish this. And there's the shadow building up. That's the shadow cast internally from one part to the next. So the last wee bit, take a couple of minutes just to finish this off. Uh, adding a little bit of highlight. It's a white pencil again. Advantage of using um, a colour paper or card for your sketching. As I said, you can also use wrapping paper. I've done many as a sketch on the uh, brown packing uh, wrapping paper before so white pencil little bits of highlight on edges or maybe where there's a, a highlight on a curved surface 
And I think something here, this one is definitely going to need to reinforce the undercuts using shadows. So this is the undercut in this little cave type area here. There will be a, a little bit more darkness, certainly in that gully or that slot coming out. And then we're going to try and guesstimate the sloping lines coming out from the side, a scoop for the top of the shadow, um, and then building up tone. And again, that might end up building up some more tone back onto the object itself. So we've got a fairly well-defined three-dimensional form from those light construction lines, ellipses, St. Andrew's Cross, dividing into 12, dividing into threes and projecting through, giving us a 12, projecting down, adding the thicker lower uh, ellipse, projecting the generators down, and then adding the detail using the generators to help us build this up. Still a few shadows to go into this thing. I think we'll just spend a little bit more time finishing it off. And please practice as much as you like and enjoy your sketching.